It's the NFL on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the NFC South. The action is only moments away, and it's coming up next on Madden NFL 25. We are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Superdome here in New Orleans. Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I can give you the standard ones. Turnover, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football gives your defense a break and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. Here's the former Illini kicker, Chase McLaughlin, to get us started. And we are underway from the Superdome. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Saints heading out for the first time, and there's Derek Carr at quarterback in his 11th NFL season now and second in black and gold. And Carr continues to produce good numbers on paper. He completed over 68% of his passes last season while also throwing 25 touchdowns to just eight interceptions. But as impressive as those numbers are, the numbers he's seeking, big numbers in the playoffs. And we expect him and his team to be back in the playoff mix when January rolls around. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Throwing now is Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss. And they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he is going to have a Saints first down. At least it would appear that way. He didn't get it by much. But yes, they do get the conversion on third and one. Uh, didn't get it by much, but bottom line, got the first down. Avoiding that three and out, how vital is that on the first drive? To me, it's like the first round of a boxing match. You know, it may not mean much right then and there, but you'd rather not lose it, right? So you want to go ahead and get it, kind of establish something early, and hope it can carry through. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six at its second down. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but... He's a good pass catcher. and That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. Complete. It's Johnson. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Here's Carr. He's going to get that to his run back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Saints first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. Well, they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4 of 4 on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease, feels good about what he's doing. I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that and continuing to let him throw the football. Yeah, he's able to skip away from that first defender on his way to a pickup of five. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, 
And the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Card out of throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That is first incompletion after a four for four start. Yeah, but they shouldn't back off from what they're doing. I like the play calling right out of the gate. I like the tone that they're setting. Keep going in that direction. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Here's Carr to throw. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he is going to have a Saints first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. From the gun, it's Carr. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Well, they're not hiding who their central focus is on offense. Charles, he already now has four receptions here on this opening drive. And I know people who are watching the game are thinking, did they forget about him in the defensive game plan? But it's actually been the opposite. They're giving him a lot of attention, but he's been very creative and savvy in his route running and finding seams and openings in order to create these completions. It gets this complete to Shahid. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. Well, that's one way and a good way to get things going offensively. One play in, and they're already on the move. The defense, they're hoping that's not a sign of things to come as this game unfolds. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. On play action, now Carr. Pitch and catch to Moreau, the tight end. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. And so far, a very nice, methodical opening drive. This has the feel of a scripted drive that they rehearsed perfectly all week long, and now they're executing it on game day. Script looks good so far. And Shahid going to go in motion. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? And the slot man goes in motion left to throw his car. And this is going to be incomplete. And that drive is going pretty darn well. Three previous times converted on third down. But on that one, the defense rose up and said, enough of that. So Carr departs and on is Blake Groupie for the Saints field goal. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. And his kick is indeed good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Well, the Bucs get ready to go on offense for the first time, and it's Baker Mayfield leading him out in his second season as a Buccaneer at his seventh overall. And he had a most impressive bounce-back season last year, nearly leading his team to the NFC Championship game. That's not something you see every day, and he is rewarded for it as Tampa Bay decided to make him definitely their quarterback for the future. Now for him, he wants to prove it's not a one-year thing, and in fact, he is the long-term answer for this franchise. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Opting to run again here with White. 
And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if we don't, you don't want them to feel like it's the end of the world either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down there, help them relax a little bit. Here's Mayfield. And his throw is incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Now a second and ten. They defer to White out of the shotgun. A good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Mayfield from the gun on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. Well, they kept it simple there, CD. Only needing the short gain to move the chain. So they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. And that went to the right side and incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Here's second and ten. In motion left, Godwin. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. Mayfield now from the 50. That is caught. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 34-yard line. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. Well, on third down, he wanted to go to one of his most dependable targets, and that's who he found, his tight end there, to pick up the first, Charles. And you use the proper word there, dependable. And sometimes spectacular, because tight ends nowadays, they can do it all. But they're the guys you trust, especially across the middle of the field where there's traffic. He delivers, and they pick up nice yardage. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. And if you look up the word consistency in the dictionary, you'll see a picture of Mike Evans pop right up. He's eclipsed the 1,000-yard mark in each of his previous 10 years in the NFL. And he's hoping to make it 11 straight at the conclusion of this season. But the payoff with him, he finds the end zone. Tied for the league lead last year in touchdown receptions with 13. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Just need a yard here, second and one. They run straight ahead here with White. Oh, and he's into the end zone 
Touchdown, Buccaneers. Rashad White, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Bucs have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. He's got it, and they'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Shotgun now for Carr. Over the middle and complete to Shahid. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. To throw, it's Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Ten more there and another first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That good for 22 and a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Now Carr. And he'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Give him two yards, that sets him up first and goal. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, 
They run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop. Ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick. That is caught by Olave. Touchdown, New Orleans. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Saints are once again back in front. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Blake Groupie now for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was Chris Alave who finished things off with a touchdown. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? 10-7, our score after one right here on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football as they've got it with a third down coming up. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. This is caught by Evans. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. A big pickup there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 right at the 40. They go with White on the counter. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Mayfield. 
And there's a short one taken in by Otten. Two yards on the pickup there. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Call it a loss of four there on the sack. And speaking of the number four, it brings up fourth down now. Well, he was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the football. The only place he ended up, down on the ground. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Deep for New Orleans is Rashid Shaheed. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25. It will. 24 yard line is where they'll spot it. The Saints offense and the veteran Alvin Kamara getting set for this next possession. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. On play action, they'll throw. Crossing rock catch made by Johnson. Down the left sideline. Inside the 10. And did he get in? No. Down at the one-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 74 yards. And what a letdown after a huge play. He's going to pull this in and then set sail for the end zone. And he nearly made it, too. But he's going to be tracked down just short of the goal line. So a big play there that's going to set him up with first and goal at the one-yard line. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Now Carr. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. A one-yard touchdown reception. And the Saints are able to add on to that lead. The touchdown all set up by the big play one snap before, but they finish it off here with a shorter completion, this time for the score. I like how they stuck with what got them there, right? The big pass play, got the momentum going, right? That's You create it with a play like that, and you come right back with another pass play to finalize things off. Here's Groupie for the PAT. It's good to make it 17-7. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They find themselves down 17 to 7 as they start this drive first and 10. Mayfield looks to throw. And this is caught by Evans. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that will bring up second down. Mayfield to throw it. Looking downfield for Godwin. It's caught inside the 25. 
And he's going to be out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 44 yards. Well, they've looked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. It delivers a big play here for this offense. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. White, he'll try the left side. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 12 more yards there and another first down. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. Here's White. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. Second and goal from the one. From the gun, Mayfield. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Trey Palmer there to make the grab. And the Buccaneers have cut it back within a score. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. McLaughlin for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. So that drive spanned five plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. breaks through the contact and out a little across the 25 to the 27 the Saints offense and their running back getting ready to go back to work and he has been a big component of the passing game so far you see the numbers for this first half this defense is going to need to find some way to key in on him because he is eating him up right now and he will not get away from the pressure here car taken down Yaya Diaby, he's the one who got in there. He gets the sack. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carping him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Throwing now is Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. The offense on third down tonight, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Carr going to throw. Wilson's got it complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. 
get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Here's Carr. It gets this complete to shoot. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down and that will not be ruled a fumble. To throw his car. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And he's got this down to the 35. The Saints passing game in sync and moving the football. It's a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Now Carr. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll look to throw again. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Throwing for the out route, he finds Wilson. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 21. 12 yards on third down as the drive rolls on. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Kamara up the middle. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 53 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Card out of throw. Touchdown, Saints! Third touchdown pass now for Derek Carr. And the Saints are able to widen their advantage. In the second quarter and already his second touchdown reception. Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Clearly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game. And I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. Groupie for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? From the 31, here's a second down and nine. Here's Mayfield. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Pro right side taken in by Godwin. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for six yards. And it'll be fourth down. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The home team's offense and Derek Carr ready for this next possession. And he's done everything you could have asked for coming in. He's spread it around. He hasn't taken many chances. And he's potentially on his way to a big game throwing the football. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second and six, just inside the 30. Carr. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And Kamara's going to have a Saints first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. That'll go as a pickup of eight. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down and six now. Here's Carr to throw. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. On third down, here's Kamara. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Oftentimes, when you see a running back get bunched up in the backfield, it's usually because the defensive tackle is eating up blockers for others to make the play. Not in this case. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. A special teams mistake there, no doubt. Just 26 yards officially on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. 
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Here's a second and five. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And he'll get about three up close to the 35. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. On third down, a run from White. And yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I said go for it. The Jake Camarda sent on now to punt this away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The home team's offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And he's had things all his way in this first half. The number's sensational as he'll look to add to them with another drive here. Now Carr. To the sideline and incomplete. You gotta give some credit. They're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Back to throw. He's gonna launch this thing way downfield. That's caught inside the 20. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Make it four touchdown passes now for Derek Carr. And the Saints are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Here's Groupie for the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now? Is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And his throw here is incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Second and ten. In motion left, Godwin. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Mayfield now. And that is incomplete. 
Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Here's Jake Camarda now. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And they will take over first and 10. This offense headed back out, captained, of course, by their quarterback. And you get a look at the numbers, they don't even tell the whole story. This has been a tremendous performance to this point. To throw, it's Carr. Over the middle here to Wilson. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Looking to throw. Carr. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. In motion right, that's Wilson. To throw again on second down. Carr, and a completion to Wilson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Car to throw again. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Second and ten. Now Carr, looking deep downfield. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. A big play there just before halftime, 44 yards. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And his kick here is good. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? This taken in at the goal line. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. For the Saints, this is why they signed him. They got a strong performance from their quarterback, Derek Carr.
He was on point repeatedly, ultimately finishing with four touchdown passes in those first two quarters alone. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So after a very one-sided first half, what will the second half bring as we are back underway on EA Sports? And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Mayfield. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. So the completion good for just three. And yeah, that's going to set up a tough third and nine. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain of 22. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. Right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. First down, here's White. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage. Left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. From just shy of midfield, here's a second and nine. To throw, Mayfield. That's complete to White. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 38-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch, I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And he edges forward but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball in this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Mayfield to throw it. Out route and the ball is caught by Godwin. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet, as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. So here's a first and ten now, down inside the 20. Now Mayfield. He'll get that out to the flat to White. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll make it second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. This is caught, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Chris Godwin, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Bucs are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. 
And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And that will cut this lead down to 13. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it's Chris Godwin who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. So now out comes this offense led by their quarterback as they take over once more. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You can say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Shotgun now for Carr. And he'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And Kamara's going to have a Saints first down as he gets this up past the 40. It's a seven-yard gain and good enough to move the chains. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game. And there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. To throw his car. Catch made, it's Moreau. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The Saints passing game in sync and moving the football. It's a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. On the counter, here's Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. There to drop him behind the line was Logan Hall. Great effort. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. It's just the nature of coaches. But I know sitting in that room, when you've had a big game, the night that they've had, you don't want to hear that. You just want to focus on the good stuff. This one incomplete and over everybody. Looked like a clear throwaway, but the officials, they're going to say there's a receiver over there in the area, so no flags, and it's third down. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. From the gun now on third down, Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he gets this only to the 41. Not near enough for the first. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. 
Baker Mayfield leads the offense out for their next possession. Last drive, surgeon-like, dare I say, seven for seven. That'll help your QB rating. <laughs> it will indeed, won't it? Can you figure out QB rating? Can you do I, it? Can no, you do the formula? No, I just know the higher the number, the better. Yeah, that's what I've been <laughs> that's told, what too. I know. I know that in the NFL, 158.3 is the number they're all trying to get to. I think he was that on that last drive. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Second and nine now from the 21. Mayfield looks to throw. That's complete to his receiver, Gadwin. It'll go down as a gain of six. And now it's third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Here's Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a box first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They'll look to throw now on first down. He'll find his tight end, Payne Durham. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid game to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. Ball on the 39. Here's the second and four. Running out of the gun with White. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 74 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. And that good, strong run could serve a little bit as a metaphor because White is someone who took a sizable leap from year one to year two. Essentially doubled his yardage output with over 1,500 yards from scrimmage, and that success appears to have carried over to this season. So again from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. Palmer going in motion right. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Open man, it's Palmer. No gain on the play. And it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Throwing again on second down. Mayfield. Flush to his right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. It'll go as a loss of about six. And now it brings up third. And keep in mind, in addition to the two sacks that he now has, CD, he's also had a couple of quarterback hurries. He's been very disruptive. To put it mildly, and it reminds me of the time I asked an offensive tackle who struggled like this in a game. He said he was telling the coach, hey, what do you want me to do? This guy's just eating me alive. And the coach finally just looked at him and said, applaud. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. They had that first half lead, but they have been shut down here in this third quarter, so time to retool a bit. And probably need to tap into that emotional vein that gets them back to 
really playing hard and effectively. Because a lot of times we think it's just play calls and this isn't working and they're shutting them down. Sometimes when you get a lead, you lose your edge. You don't play quite as hard. That's what they're looking for here. Try to get that edge back as they've watched this lead shrink a little. Kamara gets it again on second down. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Here comes third down at seven. Working from the gun, it's Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught it, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. Here comes the Saints punter now as he's on to kick it away. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. The Buccaneers offense and running back Rashad White set to take over again. And you have to imagine this defense saying, how do we stop this guy? He has run roughshod through him to this point in the third quarter. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Going right side is White. That's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. 84 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. They go right back to White here on first down. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Here now, second and four. In motion, the tight end. They stay on the ground with White. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Mayfield now. Here's White. They set up the screen. And he is out of bounds but not before he's inside the 30. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. And for Mayfield, this could be a free play. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. Following the penalty, it's first and five, and you got to think offensively, all kinds of options. They'll set up a throw. This one taken in by Otten. And they'll get this down to the 10. That's a gain of 13 as they try to whittle away at this 13-point deficit. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. 
Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Now back to throw. And it's caught. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. White. Going to be hit and met at the line of scrimmage. They get him down at the three. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Well, sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half, you're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. And not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. Now Mayfield on third and goal. Touchdown! Cade Otten from three yards out. And the Bucs are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. Well, down in this part of the field, CD, they love to get him the football. And right there, a little pitch and catch for the score. Yeah, and he's such a weapon when it's that close to the end zone. And they love being able to rely on him to make those kind of catches. Talk about trust, talk about confidence, and he produces. McLaughlin for the extra point. And the lead will shrink to six. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And Kate Otten capped things off with a touchdown grab. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And a nifty return there all the way across the 40. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. Tries the left side and finds Alave. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. In motion right is Wilson. To throw, it's Carr. That's Alave bringing in another one. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. From the gun, it's Carr. And he completes it to Wilson. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 32-yard line. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Saints. They'll be looking to expand their lead here. They've got the football as we start the fourth. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Now Carr. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Yaya Diaby able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. 
And they visited the end zone frequently in this one, and obviously they wanted another one. But give credit to the defense there. They may not make the comeback, but pride showed good sack on that play. And this offense on third down today, they're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is going to be third and 13. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to make it a two-score game. And his kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So that's CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. to throw Mayfield got his man complete over the middle that's Palmer and he's taken down but able to slip across the 35 first play of the drive going for 14 and a first down this possession means so much for them they've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game yes. gotta get a score yeah so good with a field goal don't necessarily need a touchdown so here's a first and 10 at the 38 Mayfield to throw it. And that's caught inside the 35. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And that goes for a gain of 31. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10, down at the 31. Mayfield. Throw out right, it's brought in by Otten. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Now a second and two. Going to the air again with Mayfield. He finds his target. It's Evans. And Evans will have a Bucs first down as a tackle made at the 15-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Throwing Mayfield. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans, a 15 yard touchdown grab. And the Buccaneers have made it a one score game again here in the fourth. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have him, you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And the lead is down to two. 
five plays there on that drive. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. That last touchdown has made this really tight. They're clinging now to this slim lead. What, the, geez, the second half, they only have a field goal. This offense needs to kick it into gear. And right now, I'm looking directly at the field general, at the quarterback. Because to me, he's got to take over right now by word, pumping his team up, and then, of course, by deed with his play. My high school coach used to say that all the time. Laddie, take over by word and deed. And deed means action. Exactly. Alave motioning to the left to throw his car. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Doing with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Car. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this hood across the 40. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And his throw is going to be incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Alave over the middle. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Here's Carr to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 34-yard line. A nice pickup of 17 yards. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 34. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And a short game down to about the 33. Credit Yaya Diaby with a stop. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Ball at the 33, second and nine. Throwing now is Carr. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara, 33 yards. And the Saints are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. So a heck of a drive right there with the game potentially hanging in the balance. A very good drive. And now conversion to make it a two-score game and a solid lead.
Groupie for the extra point. And that makes it a nine-point game. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's polished off through the air with a touchdown to Alvin Kamara. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The attention shifting back to Chris Godwin and the rest of the Tampa offense. They might want to mix something up defensively because he's been shredding them a bit, hasn't he? That he has, and even with all the changes that you know are going on on the defensive side of the ball, he's still finding ways to get open, finding the right spots, and the delivery's been pretty good, too. He's over 100 yards, has the one touchdown score to this point. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. It'll be a gain of five at its second down. And motion left goes a tight end. Mayfield looks to throw. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and ten. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. In any event, it happened pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had it to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield. But he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Mayfield. He's taken down here by the Saints. Wreaking havoc was Nathan Shepard, the D tackle. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. So a tough situation to overcome here. Third and 17. Mayfield now. And that one too wide and incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but... Maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Johnson was the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Here's Carr. Over the middle and complete to Shahid. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, 
You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Carr going to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. They'll send the tight end in motion left. Now, Carr again. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second down and eight. Now Carr. Again, it's Johnson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Here's third and a few inches. Now Carr. And this is going to be incomplete. The ball was tipped and fell incomplete, but it was tipped up in the air, so the guys on defense, they had to feel like that was a big opportunity, and it was missed. They needed a play to help turn things around a little bit. Ball's in the air. Can they rally to it and get it? On that play, they weren't able to. They'll take the ball, bat it away, but boy, they missed a big chance there. Only 29 yards on the punt there. Definitely not his best. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So out come the Bucks now. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. No surprise there. Chase Young wrecks that play with a sack. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. They'll come up after the sack on a second and 12. Now Mayfield. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Well, this one taken in by Otten. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Mayfield now from the 50. Throw left side taken in by Palmer. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And from the 41, this is second and a yard. Mayfield to throw it. 
And there's a short one taken in by Otten. That'll put him right at 99 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. But correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Finding Otten once more. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another first down as he went right back to the same well, this time for 17 yards. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. To throw, Mayfield. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Now a second and six. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It'll go as a gain of four. And now two yards to go on third down. Mayfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. White is into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> McLaughlin for the extra point. And the lead is down to two. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. Things sure were looking good for them at the half. Heck, off the air, you and I were just saying they might run away with this thing and cruise to a victory. Not anymore. Yeah, the cruise control has to be off at this point. Now you've got to mash the gas yourself. Again, who's going to step up and make a big play for you? Who's going to take care of business now that you're being pressed? It is definitely go time for them at this moment. All of a sudden clinging to a slim lead and hoping to hold on to that lead. Two minutes remain, and that's our score differential as well. Two points here in the fourth quarter. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Trying to run down some clock with Camara. He's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. He 
He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he will have a Saints first down. It has been a struggle, but it's looking like that'll be the one to seal a victory for him. And they'll indeed take a knee. A man who's been busy this afternoon. It's Kamara again. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. Car down to a knee, and that ought to just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. And Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to a one-possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. And in this case, these offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.